guys. Hello! Today is Friday, October 19th, and welcome to episode 73 of Knits and Stuff. Uh, my name is Alicia, and today I'll be talking about events, finished objects, almost finished objects, works in progress, pretty things, and local delights. Um, but first, welcome to those of you that are new, and for those of you that are returning, thanks for coming back. Um, if you haven't already, there's a group in Ravelry that you can join. It's called Knits and Stuff Podcast, and there'll be a link in the show notes, which are at knitsandstuff.wordpress.com, also knitsandstuffpodcast.com. Um, so let's get started. Um, events, uh, some past events. I went to Dixon Lambtown, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later in Local Delights. Um, and then as for upcoming events, um, I had mentioned Stitches SoCal, but I'm actually not going to be able to go um, down to uh, Pasadena <laughs> um, that weekend. I'm actually going up the weekend before, so I won't be able to make that. Um, but I will plan on going to Stitches West, which is in February of next year. Um, Stitches SoCal is November 1st through the 4th, and then Stitches West um, in Santa Clara is February 21st to the 24th, so I'll probably try and go on um, the weekend, and um, one of these days I'll take classes, <laughs> but probably not um, next year, so just go to the market and um, shop around, but uh, yeah, so those are the events, um, or I guess the one event that <laughs> is coming up in the future. Um, so let's start with some knitting. Um, I have some finished objects, which I actually don't have with me, um, because they've already been given to the gift recipient, but, um, I think I had mentioned, um, that I was working on some, um, baby booties, um, and I think, I can't remember if I showed the work, them in progress, but, um, they, uh, were Sarge's baby baby booties um and i'll show a picture of them or pictures of them um and um i knit it out of us ones 2.25 millimeters um on the my signature circular sock needles um they didn't need to be knit on circulars but yeah uh and the yarn is squish fiber arts beefcake sock in tom collins um, and so I finished the booties and I got some adorable little ladybug, um, buttons to put on the sides. And then, um, I made a matching hat and that, um, is the Barley Light by Tin Can Knits. Um, the ribbing, I went down, actually I went down in needle sizes for both the ribbing and the main hat. So the ribbing was in US 1, 2.25 millimeters and the main body of the hat it was US 3's 3.25 millimeters um, because the yarn, the Squish Fiber Arts um, Beefcake Sock is a light fingering so I went down um, a size just to get the right um, gauge I guess. <laughs> and so yes, yeah, so I have a finished hat and I added some um, little ladybug buttons to go with the the booties. So those were gifted um, at the baby my friend's baby shower and now her baby will have a matching hat and socks to match her sock head hat that I made um last year so that's um finished objects so I have an almost finished object and that is um the wool and waves shawl by Casa Pinka um I have finally cast this off so <laughs> what you're seeing down here is the end of the shawl um the that little stitch marker um the little tea bag is where i was the last time i showed it so i finally finished um the last section and um bound it off and now i have to weave in all all of these little ends <laughs> um many different uh colors to to weave in so um, I'll probably take some time to sit and um, and get all of those ends woven in but I'm finally done um, with it a little bit after um, the summer that I was planning to have it done by but um, yeah but it's a good it's a nice shawl I like the size I put it on a little bit um, to kind of try it on starting to show show it in sections um to try it on and and it fits 
um, nicely, like it lays um, well, and and I like how um, how it's kind of like a triangular shawl in a way, but um, with long ends, so you can really wrap it around, and it stays um, stays on. So yeah, I'll need to weave in these ends and then block it. I'll probably steam block it and rather than wash it um, or soak it because it doesn't really need to be soaked. Um, but, uh, yeah, and then, and then I'll probably, I'll probably show this again once that is done so we can get a good look at it. But, um, yeah, so that's my almost finished, almost finished object. Oh, and that was in, um, my chicken boots bag that I got from Stitches last year. Um, and I have a little bit of the yarn left over. I was definitely playing yarn chicken with um, the darkest color that's still in here. Yeah, the um, the last color which I had cast off with, I had this much left. <laughs> so yeah, um, glad I had just enough. Um, did I talk about <laughs> that I was knitting them? There, it's on US sixes, 4.0 millimeters, and I was using the Likey Licky interchangeable needles. Um, and the yarn is Miss Babs, um, a gradient set uh, of Yummy Two Ply Toes Fun in the Sun, and then um, Yummy Two Ply Toes in Quicksilver is the contrast color. So that's. Um, some of well part of what it looks like i'm using the same colors as what's in the pattern um so yeah and it matched matched the bag but um yeah so that's almost almost done <laughs> and then i have some works in progress or a work in progress so i have a new um project that i started um so it is the burberry inspired cowl um, neck scarf <laughs> by Julianne Smith and I am um, using the Viking um, alpaca that I um, that Gar my friend Garnier gifted me for my birthday maybe I think and um, yeah I wanted to find a good pattern for the alpaca um, to kind of have it like next to the skin and kind of drapey. So I'm making that this little cable cowl um, and I followed the same modifications as um, another Ravelry user um, named Lena and I'll put a link in the show notes to her modifications. But um, I'm basically just added a, an extra cable repeat so that when this wraps around, it'll come up higher. Um, and hopefully, um, I also went down a needle size, which is what she had done too. So these are on US nines, um, instead of US tens and, um, also the likey, licky interchangeable needles. And, um, yeah, so I'm hoping that, um, it has a little bit of drape, but the smaller needle size kind of gives it, um, lets it hold a little bit better um i think it is 100 percent alpaca yeah so this is the yarn and um so it is going to be pretty drapey um but that's fine for a cow so uh, so yeah so that's my fuzzy um cow <laughs> and it is definitely shedding um kind of a lot <laughs> especially when winding the yarn up so um, and I have two skeins so that should be enough for the whole the whole thing and it is sitting in the bag that my um, friend Aaron and I guess Lily <laughs> made me um, I think Aaron did the actual sewing but uh, yeah in my little project bag from from her so yeah that's all of my works in progress so that brings us to pretty things and I got um, a few things from Dixon Lambtown I really should be doing this in the other order I guess I guess I can combine pretty things and local delights so um, the other weekend I went to Dixon Lambtown um, and it's basically a small little um, festival fair uh, thing where They've got two halls set up with um, some vendors, maybe 
around 50 or so um, vendors and then they have um, uh, sheep um, contests <laughs> and um, a non sheep um, fiber animal um, judging slash contests and then um, they do sheep dog demonstrations and um, think some other things so you can also buy fleeces there I didn't buy a fleece because I still have my fleece from the Monterey wool auction like many years ago <laughs> still need to work on that but um, yeah so there's um, a bunch of little things that you can do and it's really fun um, it's uh, relatively small but it's still a lot to see and um, yeah I'll put a link in the show notes to their website where they have um, a lot of the, the information about what you can do there but um, yeah it was a lot of fun um, and probably spent like uh, two hours there maybe just like looking at all the sheep and um, and perusing the um, the vendors so yeah, so I got some things and I'll probably um, at the end of the episode, I'll put in some video of the sheep that we saw. I took a, a couple of um, snapshots of the um, different breeds that they had there. So yeah, um, so pretty things. <laughs> uh, so I got another one of these baskets. Um, oh, that is blowing out the camera. <laughs> so this is um, one of those um, baskets I think that I think this one is also made in um in Ghana I got this basket from Global Good um it is a fair trade company um they had a bunch of different um items to sell that ranged from like baskets to um to like placemats and clothing um and hand dyed fabric um, and I think a lot of the products they partner with women in um, in countries where they can help them make a living um, or make more of a living doing making um, handmade goods. So um, this was the lovely basket that I got, and these hold up really well. Um, I really like the other one that. That I got actually I got my first one from Dixon Lambtown also <laughs> so um, I got a diff another one they work great for knitting and um, or going to the market this one is fairly large so <laughs> we carry um, quite a lot of stuff but yeah um, it's also nice to just kind of sit next to the couch and put in um, all of my knitting works in progress so yeah so that's the basket that I got yeah I also stopped by chicken boots because I need more of their bags apparently <laughs> and I picked up two things one of them is um, a regular project bag with this um, what I liked about it was this little zipper pocket in the front and it's lined on the inside and it's so cute um, so you could hold some notions in there um, or a pair of scissors or something um, just small items that you might want to keep separate from your knitting and then the main pocket on the inside is just a regular um, open open pocket so and it's got a little handle here which I've been using these a lot um, on the other one it has that handle too and I'll just hang it from I have a little pegboard um, next to my desk and I have a hook that comes out so I'll just hang it on the hook and knit out of it um, so yeah, I really like how that works. Uh, and then I also got an interchangeable needle case. Um, and I love this one has a little zipper pull with a wooden, um, a wooden uh, pull, laser cut pull on it. Um, <laughs> and yeah, so this one's got a clear pocket in the back and then um, it opens up. I actually have another needle case that's kind of like this um, that I got from one of the local yarn stores that closed down um, in Berkeley and um, so I purchased a thing from there. So on the inside of this um, has a spot for all of your interchangeable needles or for a set. So it's got um, pockets 
for the cables, which are really nice. And then um, little slots for all of the different needle sizes. And yeah, it's a small case. Um, I think she, they also make a bigger case that fits um, two sets of interchangeable needles, but I really don't even need that much. Um, right now I have two sets of interchangeables um, in their own cases. So I have the Addy um, Clicks, the bamboo interchangeables, and those came in a little green pouch um, and then the Licky interchangeable needles um, those came in like a little gray jean pouch um, so I would keep those together since those are complete sets but um, I did order a pair of um, signature needles to knit the even star in and um, so I have that just kind of sitting out so if I get more signature interchangeables then um, this will be a good spot for them and any other lone interchangeable needles that I might get but I'm thinking probably only the signatures for now um, would be good ones to have. But anyway, <laughs> so that is um, what I got from Chicken Boots. The Fairgrounds was also selling, or I guess the Lambtown um, group was also selling uh, tote bags. So they had um, one from last year, which I thought was really cute. So I got the 2017 one, but it's this um, tote bag with little sheep on the front in this kind of polka dot pattern or checkered pattern not polka dots um although they do have polka dots on them um and then when I got the tote bag I also um they were giving away these little pens so they were uh little sheet pens um that you could I don't know why I'm having such a hard time focusing today um but little sheet pens and just like regular regular um ballpoint pens but I thought they were cute um, so those and those have their their website on there um, as well. So that's from Lambtown, um, the company, I guess, or the group. And then I also picked up some fiber, which I haven't um, bought anything from this company before, or at least I haven't heard of them. But it, it's um, they're called Houndstooth Fiber Arts. And they're actually from um, Castro Valley and Hayward, so really close by, um, close to where I used to work. <laughs> and um, so I picked up some roving from them. I wanted to buy, um, I was actually looking for yarn to buy for um, some Christmas gifts, but um, because it was a more fiber focused event, they're definitely more um, fiber, um, spinning fibers available than not. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> than, than yarn um so um and I did want to pick up some fiber just because it was kind of fiber focused so I didn't end up getting any yarn but I did get um this roving and I love the colors on this it's so pretty um it's eight ounces of Polesworth is that what yeah Polworth Polesworth <laughs> uh, eight ounces of Polworth um, and it's this gradient from um, a salmon pink to a lavender um, purple to this dark gray and oh, it's so pretty when I was so I went with um, my fiance and I was um, looking at it and and thinking about buying it and he was like yeah those are your colors and I was like I know <laughs> so um so yeah I I picked this up and I'm really excited for it um I really need to knit more with my hand spun I think maybe that might be a good um goal for next year is to kind of make more stuff with hand spun and I think that it would make for good um gifts too if I can make some small like hats or headbands or um, mittens or something to make with my hand spun. So yeah, that that's something I want to do more. So then I can spin more and you know use things up so I can add more stuff. <laughs> so anyway, that um, that's all I have for pretty things, and that was partially local delights too. Um, so yeah, Dixon. Um, Lambtown is in the city of town of um, Dixon, which is uh, just after D 
Davis. Is it after or before? Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's, it's close to Davis, like where um, UC Davis is, and um, kind of in between Sacramento and here, Berkeley-ish area. Um, so it's not that, um, it's not that large of a town. Um, and really we haven't explored much outside the fairgrounds. We kind of drove through, um, I think like the downtown area, but we didn't, um, actually stop to eat anywhere there, um, because we were on our way to the, um, to the festival and then we were kind of tired. So we headed back, um, right after, but we did stop by, um, a place in Vacaville for lunch, um, called Cuba Cafe and they had um, potato balls and um, guava cheese pastries, which were very similar to the ones that we get from Porto's um, in LA. And Porto's is amazing, and we just found out that they're gonna deliver um, around the world, not world, around the States, I think. Um, so now you can order stuff from them, and, and they'll arrive um, the next day. I think they do, yeah, overnight shipping. Um, Anyway, that's besides the point. But um, Porto's is really good. If you're ever in LA, <laughs> you should go to Porto's. Um, but yeah, now we have a place that's um, a little bit closer to us than LA. Um, about, I don't know, 40 minutes. Vacaville's about 40 minutes out. So um, yeah, so they had the guava cheese pastry was really good. And the potato balls um, were also good. I think I like Porto's better. But um, it did come with this really good sauce. Um, that um that was yeah it came with this really good sauce <laughs> um and then what did i get i think i got like a steak and plantains dish and i love plantains so those were very good um and then um i forget what will got i think he oh he got a, a cubano so um and i think his was good i didn't actually try any <laughs> but um it was all very tasty so yeah um, I'll put a link in the show notes to all of these places that I've mentioned. Um, and I think that kind of brings us to the end of the episode. Um, I didn't mention that I was going to talk about Wibbly Wobbly Timey Wimey today, although I have by, um, now there have been, I think by the time I edit this, um, and this goes up, there'll be three episodes of the new season of Doctor Who. But um, right now, as of today, Friday, <laughs> there have only been two, and I've watched both of them, but I haven't um, really like thought about them that much yet. Um, so I don't know if I'm going to be talking about the new season at all, um, but we'll see how I feel. Um, but so far, I don't know. I'm enjoying it, just kind of like enjoying it for fun, um, watching it for fun, trying not to overthink, <laughs> overthink it too much. But uh, yeah, but I'm excited for for the season. Um, and that's it. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) That's enough, right? Um, so social media stuff. I am Eliana and it's on Ravelry, um, Unperfect529 everywhere else. Um, and, uh, show notes are at knitsandstuffpodcast.com. And that's all I have for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. And um, schedule wise, uh, I don't know if I might squeeze in one more podcast before the holidays um, or in between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Um, Otherwise, yeah, well, hopefully I'm going to try and do that. And then um, so we'll have probably just one more podcast before the end of the year. And then, um, yeah. But I will keep you guys updated in the um, in the Ravelry group. And um, yeah, so thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.